Dr. Mayberry again, continuing our discussion of the upper limb with the radius. So the radius is one of two forearm bones. Uh, so your forearm, this is your forearm. Okay, so the radius and the ulna make up the forearm. The radius is on the thumb side of the forearm, while the ulna is actually on the pinky side. Okay, so in anatomical position, uh, the thumbs are lateral. So the radius in anatomical position is the most lateral of your forearm bones. Okay? So the radius is named appropriately because the head of the radius is this circle. A radius is a measurement that you take of a circle. Okay? So it's named for that. Uh, so we said when we talk about the humerus that the head is rounded and proximal. That is the case again uh, with the radius. So that is the most proximal end is the head. And this is a real one and it has been banged on something uh, probably just from years of, of study. Um, so it's a little bit damaged, but this is usually rounded. I don't have any plastic undamaged ones with me. So the neck then is just uh, distal to the head. So this is the neck of the radius, okay? And just distal to that neck is this radial tuberosity. So another bump on the radius, okay? So head, neck, radial tuberosity, okay? That's the proximal end in a nutshell. As you travel down the shaft of the radius, uh, if you run your fingers along it, you can feel a sharp surface and it should, you shouldn't really even need to run your fingers along it because it's actually just distal to that radial tuberosity. This sharp surface is the uh, interosseous crest. So in life, uh, you actually have a membrane. Let me not hurt. You actually have a membrane in between uh, your ulna and your radius. It's called the interosseous membrane and muscles attached to it. So that crest is a sharp ridge of bone because that uh, membrane is stretching between them. So that's what the crest is for. And that radial tuberosity is actually a spot where the ulna articulates. So what you're looking at here is marks, are marks, uh, from the ulna resting on the other side of the radius. Uh, so if we keep with that idea, that as you move distally from that interosseous crest, you come at the distal end to this notch. This is the ulnar notch of the radius. So the ulna is actually resting right in there the distal end of the ulna, which lets us make these movements, right? So head, neck, radial tuberosity, interosseous crest, ulnar notch, okay? Of course, this is the shaft uh, that the crest is going down. The styloid process, so if you're down here at the distal end, and this is your ulnar notch, the styloid process is on the other side. A styloid process is always like a process, is like an extension, a styloid, a stylus is a point. So this is a pointy extension off of the distal end. Uh, we're gonna see styloid processes on other bones, namely the ulna, uh, and it will always be a pointy end. So the styloid process is this point. The only other landmark here at the distal end that you need to know is called Lister, Lister's tubercle or the dorsal tubercle. Uh, and so the dorsal tubercle is actually right over here. So Lister's tubercle is important when we're siding the radius. Uh, so it's this bump, okay, on this, well, this uh, surface of the radius. Uh, and when we side it, I, I say knuckles with knuckles. So you can think of Lister's tubercle as being the knuckle uh, of the radius here, which is gonna help us when we side it, which we will do in a second. But first I wanna talk about the other articulations. So when we talked about the humerus, we said that there was a radial fossa. The head of the radius, when your elbow is like this, is right in that radial fossa. So obviously, the radius must articulate with the humerus. It also, at the radial tuberosity and ulnar notch, articulates with the ulna. And then, of course, this sort of messy looking distal end will articulate with your carpals or your wrist bones. Okay, and you don't need to know the specific carpals that articulate in each area, uh, but you do need to know that that articulates with your carpals. Okay, so now to side the radius. Uh, you know that the head must be proximal and this end with the styloid process must be distal. Okay, you know 
when you stand in anatomical position that the radius is lateral and you also know that if this radial tuberosity and this ulnar notch articulate with the ulna, uh, that they must face the ulna, which is medial. I told you already that I say knuckles with knuckles for Lister's tubercle, so let's put all of that together. So if you are placing this in your forearm, I'm going to do it wrong first. Uh, if I were to put it in here, and I know it's on the thumb side, if I look at the places where the ulna would articulate, there can't be an ulna over here right? So as long as I put knuckles with knuckles, uh, when you put it in your arm properly, and even on your test, you can hold it like this on your arm. Uh, the styloid process should point toward your thumb. The, this sort of flattened palmer looking surface of it uh, should go with your palm. The knuckles are with the knuckles. Uh, and the head, of course, is proximal in the elbow and then double check and make sure that that radial tuberosity and crest and ulnar notch are all facing medially and you can side your radius properly. So this is a left radius. Okay, So ask me any questions that you have in class and be sure that you're taking notes and studying with these videos.